do narcissists enjoy sex? To answer this question, we need to break down sex into three acts. The first act is the intimate act. The second, the mechanical act. And the third, the narcissistic act. As you know, sex is a major weapon of seduction for the narcissist. It is utilized extensively, both in a benign and malign manner, for the purposes of achieving those prime aims of fuel and control, character traits and residual benefits. But do narcissists actually enjoy sex? First of all, let us examine the intimate act. The short answer is, if the assessment of enjoyment is viewed through the lens of the act of intimacy, the short answer is, the narcissist does not enjoy intimate sex. Why? We reject intimacy. Because, as narcissists, we have no emotional empathy whatsoever. Intimacy is alien to us, in the sense of we don't feel any intimacy towards you, but certain narcissists are able to manufacture this. And therefore, a tender approach to having sex, uh, something called love making, the gentle touches, the whispers, the holding, the softness, the manifestation of a romantic love through long looks into one another's eyes, the noises, the words that are used, all a soft and warm, loving manner by which the sex act progresses. Even where it might be more physical, there is still a believed perception from the empath of closeness, of becoming joined as one. And therefore, all of that can be manufactured by certain narcissists. Some are incapable of it, invariably lessers, and that manifests as a rather um, mechanical, robotic sex act, one whereby actions perhaps seem out of sync with the circumstances, instances whereby you can tell there was no real intimacy to it. It was more about sex than love or intimacy. With mid-range and greater and ultra, there remains, should it be chosen, the capacity to implement an appearance of intimacy. Mid-rangers do so instinctively, greater and ultra do so consciously and aware. Accordingly, when it comes to the intimate act, no narcissist actually enjoys that. The lessers will not portray any intimacy or the barest minimum of it. Mid-rangers can go overboard with the romantic aspects of love and lovemaking. Ditto, the greater and ultra will create a semblance of um, romance, something that is apparently meaningful, the apparent deep connection between two people who are deeply in love and are demonstrating that towards one another through the commission of the act of sex. However, there is no intimacy. It's either completely absent or what you receive is a fake form of intimacy. And this is because genuine intimacy is something that we are not capable of. And indeed, the only way that we are able to actually tolerate your intimacy towards us is because it is fuel and it is signals to us that you are coming under our control. And in essence, we swallow our distaste of intimacy for the big picture win. We take one for Team Narcissist by dealing with the, the touching and the caressing, the holding the fluffy, intimate words, in order to get what we want, i.e. you under total subjugation so that we can drink on your fuel and utilise other aspects of the prime aims. Accordingly, during the intimate act, we don't enjoy intimacy. In fact, we abhor this. 
Lesser and mid-range narcissists don't realize that this is the case. Lesser's abhorrence of it manifests by showing no intimacy or very little. Mid-rangers don't demonstrate their abhorrence at this juncture because their narcissism manages to keep it under control in order to seduce you through the imposition of false intimacy. The greater and the ultra, we know that we do not want and do not like, indeed that we abhor this intimacy, but we suck it up, buttercup, for the purposes of getting the win. We're Trojans in that regard, and as complete actors, we are able to give you the portrayal of intimacy for the purposes of securing your control, of getting that fuel, etc. Therefore, with the intimate act, no, we do not enjoy intimacy during sex. What then of the second act, the mechanical act? Do we enjoy the physical sensations that arise from having sex? This is stripping out intimacy. That's already been dealt with. This is purely the physical sensation of a mouth or a hand or other body parts moving together. And the answer to that is, yes, we do. We have the same nerve endings as you, and we therefore experience the physical pleasure that arises from that movement. However, as I have explained in my fantastic book, Sex and the Narcissist, which all of you should read to expand your information and understanding about sex, there is a link in the video description, Sex, in effect to us, is just masturbating with somebody else's body. What we get out of it physically is just the same as if we were touching ourselves. And therefore, remember, because we strip away the intimacy from it, what you are left with then is the mechanical act of having sex. And the movement together of two bodies produces the outcome of physical pleasure, in the same way that you get it. Now, your physical pleasure, of course, might also, or invariably, is wrapped up with the intimacy that you experience. Not every time, because sometimes it is purely about an animalistic, athletic sex act. But more usually, particularly with empaths, there is the joining of the intimate with the physical. It all bundles together. We are not interested in the intimate, but the physical we will take because we are of the same species as you, Homo sapiens, although, of course, we function and evolved in a somewhat different way. Of course, there are certain manifestations that are even problematic with regard to the essence of the mechanical act, such as retarded ejaculation or the inability to orgasm. And this video isn't the place to go into detail about that. It's covered in the book Sex. But in essence, certain narcissists will have difficulties achieving orgasm and invariably either don't bother because ultimately it isn't that important compared to the final act that I will be addressing or they, they are hindered because of the influence of intimacy and therefore invariably you may find the narcissist retreating to the bathroom and finishing himself off or herself off after you've had sex with them because on a solo basis there's no intimacy and therefore the depressant effect of intimacy no longer hinders their achievement of orgasm. So the mechanical act we do enjoy as a pure physical sensation but if intimacy starts to creep in that can hinder the enjoyment of the physical act, and indeed in some instances may even derail it. Very much depends upon the school and cadre of narcissist. Somatic and elite narcissists are the best at driving down the distaste of intimacy and being able to perform and complete. Cerebrals struggle, and invariably their involvement sexually is done very much out of a sense of duty to score the win, and they really much would rather not engage in it at all. Victim cadre narcissists can actually hide their rejection of this intimacy 
behind their false and real vulnerabilities that they present. And therefore, for instance, they may not be able to have full intercourse because of issues of impotence, but gain some release from other types of stimulation. And they can utilize the impotence as an excuse for avoiding that full level of intimacy. The level of awareness, of course, is linked upon the school. Lesser and mid-rangers don't know that they're getting rid of intimacy, that, they, that intimacy is having this depressant effect upon their ability to reach a climax. Greater and ultra uh, have an awareness of the rejection of intimacy and of the impact of intimacy upon the level of enjoyment that is derived from having sex. Finally, we come to the narcissistic act. And this is where the greatest level of, in inverted commas, enjoyment comes from. And this is because what sex is really about to us. It is certainly nothing to do with intimacy. Intimacy is only used to get what we want by feigning it. The physical act, yes, it's pleasurable, but it's not the real reason we engage in sex. The third reason is for control and fuel. And this is where our real enjoyment, if you can describe it as such, comes from. The nullification of any threat to our control by the commission of a sex act with you, which renders you under our control, thus scores as the win for us. And therefore, the disorientating, unpleasant vulnerability threat that arises when you might cause a threat to our control is removed by the commission of the sex act. And if you will, it's almost akin to a form of relief. So if you're frightened, you wouldn't say that you enjoy no longer being frightened, but you certainly feel in a better place for it. And therefore, where the narcissist's control is being threatened by your behavior, where sex is then used to nullify that threat, the narcissist derives a degree of enjoyment from that, and again I say enjoyment in inverted commas, because we've been able to assert control. Of course, lesser and mid-range narcissists don't know that that's what's going on. Greater narcissists and the ultra do know. So getting rid of the threat provides us with a degree of enjoyment, but it goes beyond that, because of course what comes along but that staple of the narcissistic diet, fuel. Your emotional output whilst having sex with us, the noises that you make, the look in your eyes, your facial expressions, the way that you move, the things that you say, are all of these strands of fuel streaming towards us. And where you are an intimate partner, where naturally you have to be one if we're engaging in sex with you, this ranks above fuel provided by a non-intimate partner. And of course, having sex with the intimate partner primary source is extremely potent. Having sex with a former intimate partner primary source is even more potent. And of course, huge amounts of fuel are provided to us during the performance of the sex act. A three-hour sex act where you are fortunate enough to have the narcissist that is able to engage in such activity means that the narcissist receives a massive amount of fuel. It is sustained three hours worth. What you're saying, how you're saying it, the look on your face, the expressions that you make, the look in your eyes, your body language, the gestures that you're engaged in, all of that amounts to a massive amount of fuel from what will be either a very potent, extremely potent, or superbly potent source. Namely, dirty little secret, intimate partner secondary source, or intimate partner primary source, or former intimate partner primary source. If you want to understand more about the potencies, go to my excellent book, Fuel. It's an eye-opener. The narcissistic act is where the enjoyment for the narcissist arises, because the provision of this fuel not only starts to fill up the void that exists within all narcissists, it makes us feel powerful and as I've just described, in effect, that massive fuel dump that you provide when you have sex with us means that we are edified, bolstered, practically fizzing. 
as this fuel pours over us and is absorbed by us. And therefore, the responses that you receive from us, the words that are said, the expressions, the noises, etc., are the outward manifestation of the receipt of that huge amount of fuel. And therein, that is where the narcissist's enjoyment comes from. Accordingly, in summary, to answer the question, do narcissists enjoy sex, if it is looked at purely through the lens of love and intimacy, the answer is no. We're not capable of those things. We can only fake them. If it is looked at through mechanical physical sex, the answer is to an extent because of the physical nerve endings that exist. Do we enjoy it as a consequence of the narcissistic tact, namely the assertion of control and the provision of fuel? Oh, yes, we do. Very much so. And of course, with the relevant cadre, that enjoyment is the greatest for somatic and elite, then cerebral, and then victim. They are more likely, cerebral and victim, to acquire their fuel outside of the sex act or a differing application of the sex act. The true officiandos of sex, the greatest worshippers of it as a device to control you and draw fuel from you, are somatic and elite narcissists. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.